Hello everyone and thank you for having me here today. My name is Grady Carlson and I'll be providing an overview of the Codex technology. The Codex technology was created to address the need for multi-marker spatial analysis. Now the need for multi-marker spatial analysis became apparent as a number of publications began to show that it's not only the composition of tissues that affects biological outcomes, but it's the spatial proximity of the cells within those tissues that affect biological outcomes. And this tells us that we need to know not only what cells comprise that tissue, but the location and the relationships between the cells in that tissue. So here's how Codex enables us to get multi-marker detection of cells inside tissue. We start out with a cover slip on which a tissue is sectioned. We then incubate this cover slip with a cocktail of DNA barcoded primary antibodies. This cover slip with all of the tissue and barcodes bound now goes into the codex insert which sits on the microscope stage. The integrated instrument is fully automated so there's no manual application of codex reporters or codex reagents. This automation facilitates the imaging of all of our markers inside of the tissue. So let's take a deeper dive into exactly how this workflow allows us to acquire all of our images and target markers inside of our tissue section. The tissue is stained with all of the antibodies at once. And this is because we have a cocktail of DNA barcoded primary antibodies, so there's no issue of cross-reactivity. This cocktail is stained on the tissue and the antibodies are fixed, so they will not be removed. At this point, there are no fluorophores on the tissue. Just these DNA barcodes on the antibodies. Now, as I mentioned, these DNA barcoded antibodies allow us to bind fluorophores with the complementary oligonucleotides. Now these reporters or fluorophore bound oligonucleotides are, are, are going to enable us to detect where our antibodies have bound to the tissue section. So as I mentioned earlier, the workflow for codex is to reveal the antibodies that have bound to the tissue by introducing these codex reporters. We're then going to use Codex Automation to take a picture of where these um, reporters have bound to their target antibodies, and then we'll remove these reporters so that we can repeat the process of reveal, image, and remove. This process allows us to acquire all of our markers with Codex. So Codex has a number of components. We have the reagents, we have the automation, which includes fluidics and microscope automation, and we have analysis. So Codex reagents include all of the kits and reagents needed for running the instrument and the fluidics. The Codex antibodies include a number of different antibody configurations, which we'll talk about later, but they do include inventoried antibodies that can be purchased from Akoya. Codex reporters allow us to detect those antibodies once they've bound to the tissue section, and Codex barcodes can be conjugated to antibodies that we do not have in inventory. So I mentioned that I would elaborate on the different types of Codex antibodies that we have. The validated antibodies are sold as a complete assay. The Codex screen antibodies are tested for barcode and reporter compatibility, but are not sold by Akoya, and user conjugation is required. And the, the Codex community antibodies are tested and shared by Codex users, but not tested or sold by Akoya, and user conjugation is required. So for inventory antibodies, conjugation is already performed by Akoya, and for all other antibodies, um, the conjugation would need to be performed by the end user. So what tissues are compatible with Codex? Well, human fresh frozen, mouse fresh frozen, and human FFPE are all compatible with Codex, and here's some antibodies that have been used in Codex experiments. Now that's not to say that Codex is, is necessarily limited to these, to these tissues. This is simply showing what antibodies um, we've uh, seen being used for Codex experiments, and primarily that's on human fresh frozen, mouse fresh frozen, and human FFPE tissue. 
So moving on to the Fluidix controller and the Codex automation, the Codex integrates with a microscope to allow for imaging of our tissue section. You can see the Fluidic lines feeding to the microscope stage right here. So this custom insert holds the tissue and integrates with the microscope stage. And this insert is now shown where you can see two gaskets are sandwiching the cover slip that is going to have our tissue on it. So that's how the codex integrates with the microscope. And tissues are sliced onto the cover slip just like they're sliced on the slides, like traditional uh, histopathology. And staining occurs offline. So staining um, does not occur on the instrument. We do reveal where the antibodies are with the instrumentation, which is how the reporters are delivered via the fluidics here. And then we image with the microscope and then remove those reporters. But the staining of the antibodies actually happens offline. So just to reiterate the workflow, we're first going to section a tissue onto a cover slip, incubate with a cocktail of primary uh, DNA barcoded antibodies. We're then going to sandwich that cover slip and tissue between two gaskets with the codex insert and put that on a microscope stage. This integration is fully automated. So once our, once our staining has occurred, the rest of the workflow is fully automated and involves the reveal image and remove process where we can image three markers in every cycle to acquire all of our markers with codex. So here's an example of a codex experiment in which 41 markers were imaged on codex tissue. Again, we're compatible with fresh frozen uh, and FFPE tissue sections. So in terms of software, we have the ability to use either Codex Multiplex Analysis Viewer, which is an ImageJ plugin, or we could use um, VisioFarm. Now, Codex Multiplex Analysis Viewer, or MAV, is a multiplex viewer that uses clustering and gating to define phenotypes and includes a spatial analysis tool to calculate spatial metrics and investigate spatial relationships. And VisioFarm is a streamlined solution for high quality cell segmentation, high dimensional phenotyping, i.e. clustering, batch analysis, and multiple spatial analysis to tools, including um, cell neighborhood analysis. I'll talk a little bit about um, Codex, Multipl Codex Multiplex Analysis Viewer, and I'm happy to talk about um, VisioFarm with anyone that's interested in talking about using VisioFarm. OK. So with Codex uh, Data Analysis and MAV, all of the data come into MAV uh, post segmentation. So the segmentation actually occurs in the codex processor and is read into MAV. And here we can see that the segmentation file includes X and Y spatial coordinates, so we know where each cell is inside the tissue, and it also has columns for each marker or antibody. So we have all the sedimentric information about each cell and their spatial location. There are a multiple methods of analysis available inside of MAV. Um, thresholding and gating is one, where we can, just like flow cytometry, select the cells we want by gating on the regions of interest, or um, gating on the populations of interest, rather. There's clustering in TISNI, which allows us to cluster either inside of MAV or externally, and then Im import the data back in. We can use ROI to select regions of interest and spatial analysis to calculate uh, spatial proximity and the likelihood of interaction. So this is an example of Codex Mav where we're thresholding. You can see a couple of different things inside this slide. So first we see here that we have a tissue that's been stained with CD34 in red. And then I've detected where there are CD34 positive cells. And that detection is apparent because of the green dots, which are overlaying the cell nuclei. And so how were these green dots um, formed? Well, first we came into the DAPI versus frequency plot and recognized cells that have positive DAPI. Then we came into the CD34 uh, child plot and selected the cells that had high expression of CD34. Here, the red and the green are uh, different colors than the blue because they have high expression of CD34. So we're seeing the dynamic range color scaling of the C34 expression in this plot, and I've selected the upper range of expression. So this is a typical uh, view inside of Codex Mav and a typical gating workflow. 
Mav also has the ability to um, cluster cell populations. And the benefits of clustering are that it has relatively high throughput and it enables complex phenotyping and discovery of novel phenotypes. Of course, all this high multiplexing with codecs then enables um, advanced phenotyping and spatial mapping. So we can then understand where these complex phenotypes are inside the tissue. Here there's a Verona diagram showing both the color and letter annotations of um, the different cell types inside the tissue. For this uh, follicular structure, there were over 20 cell types. And lastly, we're able to use uh, the Codex Multiplex Analysis Viewer for spatial interactions. So understanding the likelihood of spatial proximity, the number of interactions that we're seeing. So red indicates a high number of interactions between follicular dendritic cells and B cells, whereas blue indicates a weak number of interactions or a low number of interactions between vascular endothelial cells and B cells. And so it's these spatial interactions that allow us to draw those um, biological conclusions that we wouldn't be able to see uh, without codex. Well, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, please contact us.